Hello everyone, my name is Viraj and today we'll be looking at the 21st problem from the CP31 sheet by TLE Eliminators under the 800 rated questions. Let's go. So I'll be moving on to my CP31 sheet over here. I have ticked off the 800 rated parameter and I can see all 31 problems out of which I am going to solve the 21st problem blank space. So I'll click on this. This opens up to our problem. Let's read. So very, very simple and a short problem. You are given an binary array A of n elements, a binary array being an array consisting only of zeros and ones, and then a blank space is a segment of consecutive elements consisting only of zero. So they have declared this to be a blank space, meaning if you have elements consecutively coming of zero, this is a blank space. Your task is to find the length of the longest blank space. So basically, the longest segment of zeros, consecutive zeros, that falls in the array. Okay. All right. So what we'll do is we'll generalize the problem. We'll try to understand what do they mean to tell us. All right. So of course they have given us an array. So I'll write down this array, array A. General numbers, let's say A0, A1, or actually I'll take some example. Let's say something like 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, something like this. This is, let's say, the array, a binary array formed only of zeros and ones. Now, what do they mean by a segment? A segment simply means, let's say, I take up some elements from a particular point to some elements from a particular point. This is called a segment. So I have started from here, took five elements and ended over here. This creates, an sub, this creates a segment for me. Or indirectly, this is also termed as sub-array. All right, so this is also termed as sub array by definition. So what they mean to say is you want to take up segment. You want to make sure that this segment actually consists only of zeros. That means if I take a segment like this, this is not a correct segment. I have some ones in this, but what about a segment like this? Maybe a segment like this. Yes. All zeros. Good to go. Maybe a segment like this. Yes. All zeros. Good to go. So out of all such segments, such segments, which contain all zero, which have all zero, which have all zero. I want the segment, which is of the largest, or you can say the longest length. All right. So of course, if I've taken a segment, it is going to have a length. So I want that segments length to be printed. This is going to be my answer, the length, which tells me, okay, this is the highest length, the longest length of a segment that was available in my array, which had all zeros. So in this case, very obvious, this segment of all zeros has a length of two. This segment of all zeros has a length of four. I cannot create any more. Like if I create even like segment like this, segment like this has a length one, length one, and all this has length three also. You can also have a length three over here, but out of all such possible segments, the best segment I can see very clearly is this segment, basically the segment with length four. So I'll, re I'll say that the answer for this particular array turns out to be four. Four is the longest segment I can create, which consists of all zeros or basically a segment of consecutive zeros. All right. So this is what the problem is. This is how we can generalize what I'm trying to report as my answer. All right. So if you look at the test cases now, we'll see what we just discussed is what is done in the test cases. Let's say over here in this case, you have the test case one, one, sorry, one, zero, zero, one, zero. So in this case, I can see a segment over here. This is a very long segment of two length, which has all zeros. So is the answer two? Yes. The answer for this is two. What about this part? You only have one segment in second test case, which has zero. So I can say the length is one. Similarly over here, the length is one over here. You have no segment with zeros. So you can say the answer is zero. And over here you have this segment, or you can even have taken this segment of length three totally, which has consecutive zeros. So the answer is three. All right. So now we have discussed the question in a general way, and you have also understood what the question wants with us by looking at the sample cases. Now, what should we discuss? First of all, before beginning any idea, we should always have in our mind what is expected when it comes to the time complexity. All right. So let's try to discuss that part. So what we have given over here is time limit per test case is one second. So I can write this down. I'll say, okay, one second is equal to 
टेन पार एट एलिमेंट्री ऑपरेशन आई नो दिस आई नो दिस फॉर अ फैक्ट नाउ इफ यू लुक एट द क्वेश्चन दे हैव सेड टाइम लिमिट पर टेस्ट इज वन सेकेंड ओके दैट मीन्स इफ आई राइट दिस डाउन आई हैव बीन गिवन फॉर वन टेस्ट आई कैन रन वन सेकेंड दैट मीन्स बेसिकली टेन पार एट ऑपरेशन एज आई नो नाउ इन वन टेस्ट यू हैव अ टोटल ऑफ थाउजेंड मैक्सिमम टेस्ट केसेस सो आई कैन से ओके इन वन टेस्ट आई हैव थाउजेंड टेस्ट केसेस now if i have 1000 test cases in each test then if i want to know how many number of operations can i run so i'll say number of operations number of operations i can run for each test case then that would be simply saying 10 par 8 that's in one second upon 10 par 3 that's the number of test cases and this gives me 10 par 5 how again i'll repeat 10 par 5 elementary operations each test case why because one test had 10 par 8 operations allowed and one test had 10 par 3 test cases so for each test case you got 10 par 5 elementary operations now what does this give me this gives me an expected time complexity in my head if let's say i look at n over here if n is given in an order of 100 can i run a solution that runs in n cube no i cannot because n cube means this is basically 10 par 6 now 10 par 6 crosses 10 par 5 limit so that means i will get a tle not an accepted solution i cannot run a solution that runs in n cube what about a solution that runs in lower than this can we go lower yes n square good to go because n square means 10 par 4 if n is 100 and 10 par 4 is definitely less than 10 par 5 so good to go and anything below this what about n log base to n Yes, definitely works. Good to go. What about anything even below O of n? Good to go. What about something like constant? Good to go. What about something like O of log base to n? Definitely good to go. So I know that I have an upper bound. I cannot go above n square. So whenever I create my idea in my head of how I want to solve my problem, I don't want to solve the problem in such a way that I create a complexity above n square. So this is my expected. time complexity discussion which tells me okay formulate an idea but don't go above n square else you know that the idea will fail you will get a tle all well, it's very very important for the beginners to understand what is expected from the problem when it comes to the coding part and the actual logic part okay now let's come to some observations now that i have an idea of expected time expected time complexity we'll try to see how can i actually solve this problem all right so i'll go back i'll take some test case i'll take this test case uh the test case i actually formed let's just take something like that example you have 1 0 0 1 then you have 0 0 0 0 and then let's say 1 and let's say one more one now essentially you would want to traverse your array from left to right because you are basically trying to count the zeros so i'll say okay i have a counter let's call this counter counter which is initially zero this counter is basically to maintain how many number of zeros have i crossed or what is the current count of number of zeros i have actually occurred now remember i want consecutive number of zeros so what will happen is ideally i'll go off to the first element i'll ask is this element a zero no this element definitely doesn't seem a zero so will my counter increase no it will not increase so i'll say okay my counter still remains zero now when i have crossed this element i go to the element second element it is a zero so can i say my current count of zeros can be increased to one yes i'll cross cross this value down and i'll say updated by one now i'll go to the second element i again find a zero so i'll say okay counter increased to two and then when i am standing at the third element very very important logic listen carefully if i am standing at the third element this element is not a zero it's a one that means this counter has to go back to zero i know that this was basically maintaining consecutive zeros if i got 1 0 then 1 0 i counted them consecutively and my counter was 2 but now if i have come back to again a one i would want to reset this counter reset this counter and make it to zero so i'll say okay this counter became zero that's fine but now let's try to traverse this process and see what essentially helps us bring our answer so i have reset it to zero i'll say okay this is the point of reset i'll mark it point of reset and then i'll do my whole simulation once again i'll say okay 
move on to this element this is a zero so i'll make it one again a zero make it two again a zero make it three again a zero okay great make it four but then again a one all right i need to reset again and this goes back to zero so i'll say okay reset done this is basically zero and then i know the final element is one never increases this still remains zero and i can see this is also a point of reset it which simply simply tells me that okay if i did not find a zero i just resetted the whole case and this told me these are the points of resetting my counter but now remember what were we asked we were asked the maximum consecutive zeros that you are able to calculate what you have done over here is simple simulation of counting the zeros consecutively and resetting the point counter every time i think i have across the one but i actually need the longest length how do i calculate that part can we clearly observe over here that the length of the consecutive element of 2 over here was actually a number that occurred at this location which was just before we reset similarly can i say that the longest you can say length of segment that fell at this location that was a total of 4 actually was present at this location before we reset so what does this tell me this tells me that if i maintain one more variable with me that's actually my answer i'll call this let's say max length something like this then this max length can every time in each iteration be updated with itself let's call this max length only itself max of max length comma this counter if i do this if i'm able to update this value which with itself and the counter of zeros then i know every time it gets updated with the highest value that was possible when i iterated and simulated the process of counting so if let's say i look at these values again this value is zero so okay fine goes one this is going to get updated two okay zero goes over here one goes over here two goes over here three goes over here and so on every value of counter is going to go at this location now imagine if you want your maximum length of course this maximum length should ideally start with zero because what can happen is you know that assumably you don't have any length or any zero occurring in the whole array so you will have zero length of segment that means i know i have no zero consecutively falling in the array i'll try to update on top of this so what i'll say is i'll say okay start with zero that's my initial value but now let's try to update this so i'll say okay zero max with the counter zero this still remains zero zero max with the counter of one okay great makes this value one one max with the next value two makes it two two max with the next value zero does it change no it doesn't because i know the next value is zero max of zero and two still remains two so maximum length still remains two now let's move on max of 2 and 1 doesn't change max of 2 and 2 max of 2 and 2 doesn't change max of 2 and 3 changes so this becomes 3 max of 3 and 4 changes this becomes 4 now max of 4 and 0 does not change max of 4 and 0 again does not change so can i see that in my maximum length when i updated with each iteration the maximum length i was able to maintain or finally end my iterations with the correct maximum consecutive segment length in this variable which tells me yes 4 is the correct answer very clearly observable this is the segment we are talking about so this becomes a very very i should say important problem when it comes to counting we understand by this that how would we require or how would we calculate the longest length of zeros in a array this can of course be extended to ask how about you wanted to calculate the longest length of ones in the array or maybe longest length of twos in the array and so on so on so on this is the counter and reset technique so i'll write this over here counting and reset technique counting and reset technique all right so very important for beginners definitely this gets utilized in problems above 800 also all right so now let us try to look at the code part to understand how would we implement our whole idea all right now that we have understood the whole logic the code would be fairly fairly simple to understand okay so what i'll do over here is i'll take the input of test case 
I'll take the input of n and I'll take the input of the array. So up till this place, all I'm doing is I'm taking input of this array. Now I have two variables. One is count of zeros and then this is maximum length. Now I go in the for loop and I say, okay, is my a of i zero? If it is, then I increase my count of zeros by one. And if it is not zero, that's a of i is not zero. That means I need to reset. So this is basically the increment or the counting part. And this is the reset part. And then after every operation, I execute this line where I take the maximum of this maximum length variable, which starts with zero or the, which simply tells me maximum length of the consecutive of the, you can say maximum length of the segment containing all zeros. So maximum with this variable and the count of zeros. And when I finally end this loop, if I print this value, this is for sure going to store the maximum consecutive length I was able to create, which consisted all zeros. All right. So very, very fun problem. Let us try to understand the time complexity. Now, this is n order, of course, taking the input part o of n order running a simple for loop. And this is also o of n order. And inside this, every logic is running in very simple constant time complexity, so simple if and else check. Hence, overall time complexity turns out to be simply o of n. And what about the space? I am using some extra space to take the input of the array. So maybe if I consider the space to take the input, that's the array itself, I can say that it's dependent of O of n. I'm of course not using any other data structure to take any extra answer. So I know O of n is a fair decent limit to put on my space complexity. Now when it comes to 100 order, this definitely works because this is going to be somewhere in, you can say O of 100, which tells me that gives me approximately a good time complexity. I know I was able to go to a maximum of 10 per 5 operations and this is barely 100 operations. So definitely gives me an accepted solution and helps me solve the question. All right. So a very, very classic example of counting and reset sort of a technique. Definitely important for the beginners. You can definitely note this problem down. All right. So I hope you like the video. Thank you for watching.